reading from the Holy Gospel is written to us by Luke. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up according to the custom. After they had completed their days there and they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a full day and looked for him among the relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said this to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he meant. But he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom, age, and grace before God and humanity. This is good news from the Lord. This is the only story we have, and only in Luke's Gospel, of anything that happened to Jesus between his birth and when he reappears on the scene at 30, seeking his own initiation. But I mention that because what he's doing here is an attempt at self-initiation. And although it sounds like a pretty, or maybe it's a disturbing little story, it's actually a, a social critique, and it's a religious critique. At the age of 13, still to this day, a young Jewish boy goes for his bar mitzvah. And at that time, he is taught by the elders wisdom and the Jewish tradition. Jesus is simply doing what he knows he needs and what he's expected to do. But the great turnaround is this, that the people that he goes to for wisdom don't have any wisdom to give him. They don't initiate him, and he's teaching them instead of them teaching him. If that sounds like a lot of contemporary religion, the patterns never change. So we have seniors who are not really seniors, they're juniors, it seems, and the junior is the senior. Now, I'm not sure that's always the case anymore, but sometimes it is. I've met children in cancer wards who have wisdom way beyond people who are 60 and 70. But we certainly are, as my years of male initiation rights taught me, we are a society without initiated men, without elders. They're elderly, but they're not elders. And there's a big difference. Just because you've grown old doesn't mean you've learned from your experiences. And so what we have here is a critique of the Jewish leadership. Here he goes to the center of power and doesn't find what he was hoping for. And yet it says he listened to them, but he also taught them. So we have things turned on their head. Normally we hear this simply as a, a story of a apparently somewhat uh, irresponsible boy. And we say, what kind of mother was the Virgin Mary that she could go three days without missing her son? But, of course, we live in what we call nuclear families. The entire society was the extended family. If you were with your aunts and your uncles and your cousins and your grandma, you were in the family. Mother didn't have to do all the worrying about the children. So only if you understand that do you understand the story. But as we, you know, listen so much, it seems nonstop to political uh, campaigning. 
I think we don't need much uh, proof that we are society without elders. Sometimes I think we wonder, are there any of them we would elect or are worthy of being called wisdom figures or father figures or elders in any sense? So I guess it's some strange kind of consolation that Jesus must have faced the same thing, that at least he was wise enough to know that he did need wisdom. And he was wise enough, it seems, to know that it took him a long time to find it because we don't hear another word from him hmm, for uh, 17 more years. All we can assume, and that's what the last line says, he grew in wisdom, in age, and in grace. I love to use that very line to point out that you know, when I was a little Catholic boy and came to see the crib at Christmas, I assumed Jesus was laying there in the manger and he knew everything. He was God, of course. But this passage makes it clear that he grew up like everybody else had to do. He didn't know all the answers ahead of time. He had to learn them. He had to learn wisdom. He had to learn to distinguish what's useless gossip, what's just angry commercial trafficking, and what is really something worth waiting for. So I think the recognition that we are not yet wise might be the best impulse or encouragement to seek that wisdom. And isn't that a challenge to all of us? If you're not doing anything all week to read something intelligent or to expose yourself to wise people, and we're supposed to make up for it in this 10 minutes we talk to you here, it's not going to work. Basically, what we learn, I hate to tell you, but the people who learn wisdom tend to be the people who've suffered. I know that isn't good news. None of us want to suffer, but I don't meet many wise people who haven't either suffered or have been in deep relationship with people who have suffered. Now, the secret is not just to suffer, but to come out the other side wiser, to come out the other side not bitter, not angry, not hateful, like so many of our politicians are. That's what tells me they're not elders, they're not transformed. If you're still licking your wounds, you're not transformed. If you're still blaming other people for your suffering, you're not transformed, converted, saved, whatever word you might want to use. It's not the suffering that does it, it's what do you do with your suffering? What do you learn from about life, about humanity, about God, about grace, about faith, hope, and love? Those are only learned in the school of suffering. So even though Jesus is seeking his initiation, he keeps pretty quiet for the next years till he knows he has something to say. And maybe that's the final message we might take. I think I get a lot of chances to talk, but sometimes, <laughs> maybe me too, uh, a lot of times people who talk a lot don't have anything to say. In fact, the people who tend to take over the conversation usually have nothing to say. People who say very little know that it's worth saying. So I say too much. You can draw your own conclusions, but wait and hear and listen and learn and then speak a few words that might be worth everybody's hearing. I think that's what Jesus did and I think that shows us he was a truly transformed and initiated man.